Hey guys, welcome back to Cougar Chem Tutoring. I'm Austin, and I'll be running through part two of problem set 13, isomers. All right, number three. For each of the following, draw five different structural or geometric isomers with the given molecular formula. Okay, geometric isomers, remember, are only going to come into effect when we're working with double bonds. So unless I'm working with um, a compound that has double bonds, I'm not going to be working with cis and trans isomers, okay? So five different structural or geometric. So I'm going to actually just ignore this one until I need it. Well, not, not right now, but until I need it. So um, let's look at this first one, C7H16. So if I draw that, I'm going to draw the stick structure of this thing. Actually, it looks like this, okay? So there's two, four, six, seven carbons, okay? And there are, you'll, I'm not going to count all the hydrogens, but there are 16 hydrogens here, which means that there are no double bonds in this structure. So I've actually drawn the first possible um, isomer, okay? So this is one of the isomers. Um, again, I, I reviewed a little bit in the last video what uh, how to read these structures for organic compounds. Hopefully, you're able to recognize that this is seven carbons, um, and then you can kind of inherently see the, the hydrogens that are here. Okay, so um, to, to then make a different structural isomer, this is what you do. Once you've maxed out a parent chain, we talked about this a little bit in the last video. Once you've maxed out a parent chain, so this, this is a parent chain of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Once you can't do any more of the sevens, you move to six. So you go to one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and then... You, you need to put a methyl group somewhere. You, you still have an extra carbon and three hydrogens that you need to put somewhere. So then what I do is I just move it around. So I'm going to put one right, oops, right there. Okay. And that's going to be a second structure. Okay. And I can actually make another one with the same parent chain, but just put it right here. Now, some people may be tempted to make the following structure. Okay. They may, may be tempted to make this structure. But you'll notice that these two right here are the same structure, okay? They're interchangeable. Because what we, this is on this one, two, three carbon, this is on the one, two, three carbon, it's just flipped, okay? It's just it's just like I turned it around, okay? They're the same structure, so don't make that mistake. Um, a lot of students have done that before on a test, thought they drew a different structure and missed points because it wasn't another isomer. So just be wary of that, okay? So we've now maxed out the number that we can do on six, uh, on a parent chain of six, I'm gonna change the parent chain to five, one, two, three, four, five, okay? And now I have two methyl groups I need to move around, so let's just put two right here. Here's five, let's put uh, one right here and one right here. Um, and that's five already, so I'm not even gonna, I, I could keep going, but you can kind of see the pattern, right? You, um, As you go down a parent chain, you have to add another methyl group somewhere else. So um, here I had to add two more, right? Whereas here on the parent chain, I only had to add one. Um, and so on and so forth um, until you need until you reach the number of isomers that they've asked you to draw. Okay, and again, we and this one's not going to have any geometric isomers because we don't have any double bonds, so we're not going to worry about that. All right, letter B here says C five H ten. Okay, so if I draw that, it's going to look like this. Okay, but it's H ten, um, and if you notice, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve hydrogens here. So to get down to 10, we do make a double bond, okay? Um, and that's actually why that's important. Um, we call this an, a degree of unsaturation, okay? Uh, un if this was completely saturated with hydrogens, we would call it a saturated compound. But um, when we have double bonds like this one, um, it becomes unsaturated, or it becomes, yeah, there's a degree of unsaturation. So this is one possible structure. Now, um, this is this is a double bond, so there is a cis and trans isomer form of this version, right? So this, if you look, if I look uh, across each bond, this is the biggest group on this side, this is the biggest group on that side, and then across the bonds, they're on opposite sides. So this is going to be the trans isomer, okay, trans. Um, in this case, there, there's actually going to be, um, a, 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 maybe a, there could be a different type of trans as well, but we'll just work with this one so far. So um, I could have easily put that double bond on the first set, right? I could have easily put it right there, so I'm going to do that as well. Um, but really quick, we can draw the cis form of this one. Actually, I'll label this one three, and then we'll put this one as two, and then this will be the, the cis form. So we've got this guy right that, okay? And that would be our cis form of this compound. Um, all right, so that would be, uh, and just to double check, just in case you yeah, you didn't catch that, the reason that this is the cis is because the biggest groups are on the same side of the double bond, okay? All right, so um, on to number four. Now, I've I pretty much maxed out 
my um, ability to use a parent chain of five. Um, just to double check though, uh, let's put the double bond here. This double bond here is the same as number one. Okay, so that's not gonna work. Um, if I put the double bond on the end here, that's the same as this guy. So that's also not gonna work. So yeah, we're totally maxed out on um, the parent chain of five. Let's move to a parent chain of four now. So I'm gonna move one, two, three, four. And then I can put a double bond here and then a methyl group here. And that should work just fine. Um, uh, they've asked us to draw five, right? So let, here's here's our last one. We can do, um, we can even put one right here and then put this double bond here. And then we'd have to label this either cis or trans, but you'll notice that these are the same group. Okay, so these there's actually not gonna be a cis or trans isomer of this form because it's gonna look the same no matter what. So um, these are five possible structures for these compounds. Um, you could draw more. Um, in fact, this uh, could be cyclized as well. You could actually draw a pentagram. Sorry, a pentagon, not a pentagram. Um, and um, this would actually function as well because cyclization also is considered a degree of unsaturation just like a double bond. So in this case, as long as I maintain all single bonds, you'll notice that there's C5. H10 because there's two hydrogens on each of those um, and it's it's considered a degree of unsaturation we've we had to take away two hydrogens from the saturated form to get this compound um, and there are several other structures you could have written um, I'm just going to stop here um, just for simplicity's sake okay and number four draw all possible all possible isomers of pentane so actually the previous problem that we did is actually a compound called pentene pentene we call it pentene because it has a double bond but pentane would uh, be the non-double bond form of this. It would be look like that, okay? The alkane form. And this would be my first isomer, okay? Now, we've maxed out on a parent chain of five, so I'm gonna move to a parent chain of four and then move a methyl group around, right? Here's, uh, let me do it again. Okay, can I do this one? No, I cannot do this one because it's the same as this one, okay? So I'm gonna erase this, um, which means I've maxed out on the, the um, parent chain of four. I'm gonna move to parent chain of three, whoops chain of three. Okay, and I have two groups that I have to move around. So I'm going to put um, my two groups here. And notice I have one, two, three, four, five carbons still. And if you counted the hydrogens, they'd still all be there. Um, but there's not going to be any cis or trans, right? It says including cis or trans, but there's no double bond here to work with for cis and trans. So I'm actually going to ignore that. And actually, this would be all the possible isomers of pentane. Um, and it's kind of, and it was kind of boring, but um, there's there comes a point where you literally can't do any more. So this is these are all the the isomers of pentane. All right, number five. Determine whether the following compounds are isomers, and if so, what type? Okay, the first thing that you want to do is count the parent chain. Okay, count the parent chain. So in this case, one, two, three, four, five, six. The parent chain is the longest chain of carbons that you can find in any compound. Okay, so. Um, I, I have six here and I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so, so far we have not only the same number of carbons, but we have the same parent chain. And you'll notice that we have the same group, okay, but and it's coming off the same carbon. Now, you may be confused because you're like, oh, this could be, this is the cis and this is the trans. But be wary, that's not a double bond, right? We can rotate around single bonds. And so this these two are actually the same molecule, same molecule, because... Um, this this can rotate like that. It, 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 it doesn't do it often because it, it actually creates some steric hindrance here. It causes a little bit of um, uh, interference with some of the electron clouds on different parts of the molecule. But um, it's the same molecule because you can rotate around these bonds, okay? You can rotate around them because they're all single bonds. Um, if they weren't, if this if this had been a, a double bond here and here, then yes, these would be, iso these would be cis trans isomers, right? But they're not. They're actually the same molecule, okay? Um, and we can double check too if we wanted to. It's even on the same carbon, one, two, the third carbon, one, two, three carbon. Um, and you could count all the hydrogens if you wanted to as well, and you'd find that it's the same compound. All right. Um, here on part B, I'm going to count the parent chain. Um, parent chain starts with carbons, okay, not with the with other groups. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I have a parent chain of six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so so far it looks like we might have something similar. However, if you remember from the example I gave earlier, cyclization, okay, having a cyclized form of something is a degree of unsaturation. It's like having a double bond. It's it, We took away two hydrogens to make that happen. So if I if I were to look here, I have to make sure that this has some sort of degree of unsaturation, and it doesn't. It, 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 if it had a double bond, it would, 
um, but it doesn't. Um, or even if it had just a, you know, a cyclization here between those carbons, that would be considered a degree of unsaturation, but it doesn't. So these are actually different molecules. So they're not, they, they can't be isomers. Okay. Now you can double check. Well, let's double check actually, just to make sure that they're different. So here we have our OHs. So those, those are the same, but we have one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. We have one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. But let's count the hydrogens really quick, okay? So I've got two here, two here, two here, two here, two here, and three on the end here. And then here I've got one here, two here, two here, two here, two here, and two here. If I got two, four, six, eight, 10, 11, 12, okay, so I've got 12 hydrogens here, and I've got three, five, seven, nine, 11, 13, 14 carb or hydrogens here, okay? So those are different compounds because uh, they don't have the same chemical formula, so they can't even be isomers, okay? They're actually different compounds entirely. And it's all because of this degree of unsaturation, that's what makes them different. All right, last one. So let's go ahead and count the carbons. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six carbons. Okay, so so far we have the same amount of carbons. And we both have, they, they both have a degree of unsaturation where they're both cyclized, right? And so I can kind of tell that this is probably going to be the same because I see the same group here as well. So we may end up having the same, but let's just double check. So we said we had six carbons um, and we have uh, one oxygen on each one of these, right? So now let's determine the number of hydrogens and make sure that they're the same. So we've got two here, two here, two here, two here, two here, one here, and one here. And then we've got one here, one here, two here, one here, two here, two here, and then three on this end here. So here I've got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, twelve hydrogens. And then here I've got two, four, six, eight, um, and then 10 and then 12. I don't know, hopefully you're cut, you could catch that, but the, you can, hopefully you can see that there are 12 here. Okay, so they, they are the same, they, they have the same chemical formula and they're bound differently. Okay, they're different compounds. So yeah, these are isomers. These are, in fact, we would actually uh, call these constitutional isomers, right? Because they're, the, the compounds here are bound differently. So these are gonna be constitutional isomers. Okay, um, hopefully that, that the isomers are, are starting to uh, click and they're, they're kind of making sense now. All right, last one, number six, the alkenes to the right. Alkenes, remember, are referring to double bonds, double bonds, okay? Um, are to the right are cis and trans stereoisomers. Okay, write the name for each. Label them, labeling them each as cis or trans. Um, you don't need to worry about naming the actual organic compound. Just name, label the which which one is cis and which one is trans. Now, you can probably already tell, but there are going to be times where it's going to be a lot less obvious which one's a cis and which one's a trans. And I'm telling you, this is the way to do it. So, cut this in half perpendicularly first. Label side one and side two. On side one, determine the biggest group by atomic weight, okay? That's chlorine, okay? And on this side, it's going to be chlorine as well. And then after you've circled the biggest groups on each side, then look across the bond and across the double bond parallel to the bond. And then determine across this bond, are they on the different or, uh, or the same side? If they are on different sides like this one is, this is going to be trans, okay? Trans. And then the same here, I cut this in half perpendicularly. I circle this guy, circle this guy, look across the bond. They're on the same size. This is the cis isomer, okay? All right, um, I hope that was helpful and that you kind of get a good idea of what isomers are. We'll see you in the next video.